Hi, my name is Daniel, and today I'll be explaining how JavaScript handles variable scope. I'll also be showing you how understanding variable scope opens up one of JavaScript's most powerful tools, closures. When I talk about variable scope, I'm talking about two main types. Global scope, for variables that are available to your entire JavaScript application, and local scope, for variables that are only available inside the function in which you declare them. Let's show this in an example file that I've written. Uh, basic HTML file with a JavaScript that's being pulled in. Here's the JavaScript and it shows creating two variables. Now the first one, my global one, is declared outside of a function, is therefore a global variable. My local one is declared inside of a function and is therefore a local variable. I've got these two lines here which are logging out the values of those variables to the console. So let's open this up in Chrome and have a look. So open up the file. View developer JavaScript console will bring up the JavaScript console and you can see these two lines being logged out of those two variable values. Now this shows that I've got access to my global variable inside of a function. I've also got access obviously to my local variable. If I take this out and put it outside of the function and reload this page, you'll see that my local one is not defined. That's because the global scope outside the function does not have access to local variables. Now it's important to make sure you do use the var keyword when you're declaring a variable. If you don't, you're going to make a global variable. If I add a new variable called local2, because I've left out the var keyword, what it's trying to do is actually update the value of my local2. Because I haven't created it before, it's going to look in the global scope, and if it doesn't find it there, it's going to create a variable of that name. If I log that value out, you'll see that it's now available in the global scope. If I want to declare a global variable inside of a function, this is a perfectly fine way of doing it, but it's not very clear what your intention is. The best way to do that is to actually explicitly say that you're making a global variable by assigning it to the window object. So now here, my global2, because I've said it's part of the window object, is definitely going to be part of the global scope. And here you go. Another way to declare a local variable is by using parameter names when you define your function. If I add my local2 to this and then pass in a string when I call the function, that is the equivalent of calling or creating another local variable inside of that function. So what happens if I declare a local variable with the same name as an existing global variable? In this example here, what I've got is a global variable, myVar, and a function that uses myVar for a local variable as well. In the global scope here, I'm going to console log out myVar, see what we get. Open up the second example, and you'll see there it gives me the global variable. That's obviously because I can't get access to a local variable in the global scope. However, if I move this into the function scope and reload the page, I get the local variable. The reason for this is that the browser will always look in the local scope for a variable value before going to the global scope to look for it. Now an interesting thing to look out for and something that has tripped me up a number of times is that if I just put my log up here and assume that because I'm looking for my var before I've declared it as a local variable, I should get the global value. That doesn't happen. What you'll get is undefined, which is a bit weird. What's happening here is something called hoisting. If you declare a variable inside of a function, JavaScript will hoist that variable declaration up to the top of the function, equivalent of this happening.
So that's happening invisibly in the background with JavaScript, it's just something that you need to be careful of. Happens if I haven't been particularly careful with naming my variables and I've got a local variable the same name as a global variable and I still need to get access to my global variable. Well, this is where the window object comes in handy. Window.myVar will look for the global variable with the name myVar rather than any local variable. I save that and go into Chrome. We'll see I've got my local variable and my global variable being logged out because I'm getting access to it through the global scope using the window object. So far the examples have been really straightforward. Just a single function to show the difference between local and global scope. But what happens when you've got functions nested inside of other functions? This creates something called scope chain. So in this third example, I've got three nested functions and the third function is logging out the value of my var. My var is a global variable at this point. So when I open this up in Chrome, you'll see it finds the global variable and logs out its value. Now, what it's doing is it's looking for the value of my var inside of its scope, and then if it doesn't find it, it's going up to its parent, and then its parent until it finds the value. If I create another variable inside of the grandparent, and then reload the page, you'll see it finds the grandparent value. Likewise, if I do that for the parent function and for the child function, it will find whichever one is closest to its own scope and use that. However, this isn't overriding the other ones. If I log out those values in their respective scopes, you'll see that you access the value of that variable in the closest scope to where you call that function. The connection between a function scope and the scope of its parent is actually called a closure in JavaScript. Um, all a closure refers to is that when you have a function, it is intrinsically tied to the scope of its parent. Simple as that. If I get rid of this line here, and I'll also get rid of these other log statements, the moment child function has a closure with its parent function. If I make that child function accessible to the global scope, simply by doing that, I'll now have access to this child function outside of the parent function. If I load that up in Save that, load that up in Chrome, you'll see that it is logging out the value from its parent because it no longer has a local version of that variable. And if I call that, I can run it again. And normally that variable would be hidden from the global scope. But because I've made the child function accessible in the global scope and the child function has a closure with its parent, I can access that variable via that function. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the theory of variable scope, but I find it's much easier to understand these sort of concepts if you use a bit more of a real world example. In this fourth file that I've created, I've got what you might see if you're making a music player app. I've got an ordered list here with track names and a little display down the bottom which will show which track you're playing when you click on the track name. If I go and open this up in Chrome, you'll see what it looks like. So, quite simple. Just track names and now playing track number and that'll be where we put the number. So back here, I've linked up a JavaScript file and this is the closures JavaScript file. What we want this script to do is make it so that when you click on a track name, the number of the track you've selected will be displayed in the bottom of the page. So this file uses pretty much all the concepts that we've covered so far. We've got a global variable where we're storing the document element where we'll display the number. We've got a 
local variable here where we're going to store an array of all the track name elements that are on the page. We've got a for loop here that uses a, another local variable i that iterates through that array of track elements and for each one adds a click event listener. That click event listener will trigger the click handler and here we've got another function that references its parent scope and calls in the number i or the value of uh, the variable i and will populate the number document element with that value. So if we go to Chrome and have a look at how that works now, you'll see it's not really working properly. Every time I click it, it's saying it's playing track number 11. Clearly it's broken, so we need to fix this. First of all, let's have a look at whether or not we're getting the right value of i. Run that. You can see clearly we've got numbers 0 through to 10 being logged out, yet I'm still getting the wrong, the wrong number. So let's log that out here as well. See, the console is logging out the incorrect number as well. So what's going on here? What's actually happening is the loop is finishing running before the click handler ever actually gets to be called. So by the time the iteration is complete, i is set to 11. When click handler gets called, i is going to have the value of 11 and therefore we're going to get the wrong number. So how do we fix this? What we want is for the scope of click handler to reference the value of i at the time that it was generated in that loop. And this is where closures come into their own. So what we'll do is we'll actually create a new function called uh, generate click handler. And what this function will do will return the click handler as a value. Turn that. And instead of call like just passing in a function here, we'll actually call generate click handler and pass in the value i. In here, we'll make a new local variable called Let's call it track number and use that instead of referencing i itself. So, it's a bit tricky to understand what's going on here, but essentially what we're doing is calling generate click handler. Generate click handler will return the function, so we're effectively getting the same we're getting the same benefit or the same effect as just putting click handler in there before, but we're passing in the value of i during that loop. Track number is taking that value of i, and because i is different every time we call this, we get the numbers 0 through to 10 being passed in. So let's see whether that works. Excellent. So what's happened is we've got almost the correct numbers coming through. Again, indexes tend to be, well, the index of an array is starts at zero, so all you have to do is add one, and we've got our little app is working the way we wanted it to. Closures take a little bit of practice to get the hang of, but before long you'll be using them in your projects all the time. Thanks for watching.